Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, dear colleagues. Uh, my name is Otan Orban, and um, maybe it's hopeless to give you, uh, to tell you the whole story of the project in 20 minutes, but I do my best. So I'm from Hungary, from University of Pécs, and uh, from this year I'm in charge of leading the uh, Institute of Engineering and Smart Technologies in our university. And uh, we have one of, one of our greatest uh, mission is to provide sustainable solutions in, uh, in engineering. And uh, I'm convinced that uh, smart technologies uh, can uh, help uh, create sustainable structures for the future and also maintain existing ones. And uh, masonry arch bridges are sustainable structures because they have proven durability and they are part of their heritage. And uh, if you calculate the life cycle cost of these structures, surprisingly, they are much lower than uh, compared to other structures' life cycle costs. So why we are here for uh, uh, proving that uh, masonry arch bridges can be maintained, and this is the major task, uh, uh, our major mission, uh, greatest mission for today. So uh, why did we start this project? Maybe it can be a surprise uh, for you that uh, this idea of this project came from Hungary. But I have to tell you that I used to work as a bridge engineer and started this activity more than 20 years ago. And uh, during my work, I, ah, oh, sorry. Okay, I've come across arch bridges very often in my work. Maybe we don't have the highest number of arch bridges uh, in Europe. In, in Hungary, but um, our arch bridges were in very bad condition. So I, I could see a lot of arch bridges deteriorating in very bad condition, and, and I could also uh, see inappropriate treatment of arches. They used very bad solutions for, for maintaining the structures. If, I don't have to explain why if you look at these photos. And also <laughs> use shotcrete sarcophags <laughs> to, to supporting the structures and uh, ignoring the existing capacity of the old structure. Uh, not to speak about <laughs> this solution, which is absolutely uh, um, nonsense. Okay, so I, after seeing these very terrible solutions, I, uh, I uh, came up with the idea of a project in Hungary. We started a research project in Hungary on, on arch bridges. And, uh, and after that, we turned to UIC to help because we needed some more information, some more help on solving our problem. And uh, we started a project at UIC. Uh, at first, we had only very few members in this project, but uh, finally, uh, more and more railways joined this project. So a few words about the background. We, um, we found that uh, the problem was not unique in, uh, in European railways, so and other railways had similar problems that we had. And um, concerns raised, uh, uh, raised about uh, these structures. Uh, are they reliable enough? Can they withstand the future loads, the higher extra loads, or the increasing uh, train speed and traffic, the higher volume of traffic? And the uh, question arises, what is their remaining service life? And that was the, uh, the, the biggest question for, for <coughs> the railways addressed to us. Uh, do we have to replace these structures? Is it possible to save them by, by proper rehabilitation manners? Uh, and um, I think we are all here to, to focus on rehabilitation and not replacement. And uh, we try to show you uh, proper ways, or I, I can also say smart ways, of, uh, of uh, approaching this problem and solving this problem. And uh, so that was the reason of uh, this international project. Uh, the title of the project first was Improving Assessment, Optimization of Maintenance and Development of Database of Maison Riage Bridges. It started with the first phase and collected all available information and knowledge in this field summarize the best practice we had. And um, after that, we went on with the second phase when we developed uh, tools um, and guidance on assessment, inspection, and maintenance uh, for the railway administrations. And um, as a conclusion of the second phase, we find that there were not enough knowledge. We, we had to go further and still have to work on a bit more. So we went on uh, with the third, fa uh, third phase when we developed the specific assessment tools, focusing on permissible load and the life expectancy. And then and these two 
uh, issues will be on the focus of uh, today's uh, workshop. Oh, project, project team. Uh, the number of uh, partaking railways um, was growing since the beginning. Surprisingly, we started with uh, only a few number, maybe two or, uh, three or four. And finally, there were 17 members joined the project, not only from Europe, but other, other countries from, from uh, outside Europe, from India, Japan, for example. Uh, altogether, we had 36 mem working group members uh, from various uh, countries and uh, research institutions also joined the project. So I'm very thankful for them. Uh, they gave a lot of uh, input to our project. Uh, without, without the cooperation, international cooperation, we, we wouldn't be uh, successful. Uh, conclusion from the first phase, from the, from the state of the art phase. Uh, there are two astonishing numbers. Uh, the number of masonry arch bridges and culverts existing on European railway lines only, and 200,000. And uh, from, from this number, 80,000 arches are, are uh, having a span higher than two meters, so they considered bridges, and, and these uh, smaller two meters, one and two meters are considered uh, culverts, which is approximately half of the total railway bridge population. Other conclusion that uh, we had, at that time, insufficient understanding of arch behavior. I don't know how, how can we assess our knowledge now, but at that time we assessed uh, that we had an insufficient knowledge. And uh, no widely uh, used reliable assessment tools were available. That's what we decided on developing user-friendly new assessment tools. Uh, there were no consistent descrip description for defects, and uh, therefore we decided to focus on uh, developing a damage catalog or the defect catalog, in other words. And although there were um, very efficient new test techniques available in the field of uh, engineering, it was not utilized. This potential was not utilized uh, for masonry arches. Uh, therefore, we decided to, to develop guidance on testing. And uh, finally, we decided to work on guidance, a guideline for repairs. So this was our objective, and uh, we started with a second phase, because this uh, state of the art phase was intended to collect the available information and to, to, um, to make the objectives uh, for the research. So in the second phase, we defined uh, four different work packages, one focusing on uh, assessment, second one on inspection of arches, and the third one of maintenance. And uh, we also, we, we collected all information, background information available in the, in the form of a database that was put on uh, UIC's website. So uh, we de developed uh, reports, background documents, and guidelines. And uh, as a final result of this phase, we developed a leaflet in 2011 with the title of recommendation for the assessment, inspection, and maintenance of masonry arch bridges. And here you can see the, the major uh, topics and chapters of this leaflet. And uh, we're focusing on structure, structure and behavior, inspection, monitoring, assessment, maintenance. And um, finally, in the sixth ch uh, chapter, we had to confess that we still have no enough knowledge, we have no uh, information, so we defined areas for further research and development. And I think that was the most important because we managed to persuade UIC's uh, leaders to, to support us for a further phase. So we um, defined clearly our, our, these areas that we, we think that's important for further research. Um, you will hear today a lot of time that uh, behavior of arch is still a miracle, even for the <laughs> top researchers. So they, that, that's why it's interesting, much more interesting than steel or reinforced concrete. It is only my opinion. Uh, no. no? Okay. <laughs> so um, we, we wanted to focus in the deterioration process on the service loading, because we knew a lot about uh, ultimate behavior interaction of arch with soil, dynamic behavior, interaction of the multiple spans, 
in large bridges or is still needed to focus on uh, specific assessment problems such as um, assessment of arches with defects, repaired arches, and uh, this is one of the most important assessment of serviceability and residual service life. But first we have to define what we mean by serviceability, which is not quite obvious than, uh, as for uh, concrete or steel structures. For masonry, serviceability is a little bit different issue than uh, for <laughs> other structures. And the reliability assessment is still an open question that we have to uh, further uh, research, in, uh, I think. So um, we selected some subjects, some topics from this list, and we assembled our, our new plan according to, to this uh, selection. And the uh, objectives of the third phase, the last phase, was uh, um, made according to, to this selection. So we wanted to achieve a better understanding of uh, the iteration process. And uh, secondly, to help determine safe working load and the residual life of Irish bridges. I think uh, this is the most important for, for uh, uh, railway administrations to define which is the, the safe working load and how much life is left in these structures. And finally, dynamic uh, behavior, dynamic calculation, monitoring, iteration. As I said, if you have good monitoring, we, we, we can, we can uh, easily maintain the structures if we know everything about the behavior and we see any, any deterioration process uh, and any, any change in condition. We can monitor this, we, we, we keep in hand the, the, the story of the arch. And finally, uh, the extension of the UIC code, which now we don't call it UIC code, we call it the IRS, as was mentioned in the previous presentation. And um, in this phase, we developed not only the, the, guide, the, the, the leaflet, the railway solution, but also some background documents, uh, reports, uh, on, on, the very, on the following subjects. Um, we focused on degradation, on the service loading, uh, dynamic behavior, condition monitoring using acoustic emission, which is a very effective tool, and guide to assessment of damaged arches, arches with defects, and guide to assessment of serviceability or life and life expectancy. So these are the major topics that we developed a guideline for. And um, as the final result of the project, I, I can show you, this is a, it's about 140 pages. It's a small uh, leaflet or guideline that uh, contains all important information from the background documents. So I would say it's a summary of our, 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 our uh, deliverables. And it's intended, intended for use by, by infrastructure owners engineers, bridge engineers, who are responsible for inspection, assessment, repair of arches, and also contractors. So these are the our focus area. And uh, just one, one screen, one page from, from the content. So the content is almost the same as, um, as in the previous version of the leaflet, but we extend it with, with some more uh, information in focusing on serviceability issues, life expectancy, specific test methods, monitoring, dynamic behavior. So these are the new knowledge, new information in the new leaflet. Okay, and finally, I, I hope uh, I could give you a brief insight in, uh, to our project, although it's 20 minutes was not really enough. But, uh, but the, whole day, the whole day is about, and the two days <laughs> are about this uh, problem and um, Thank you very much for your attention.